Hello and good day. A couple of weeks ago, I finished reading the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Not to brag, but I've read a lot of books, and I know a dang fine book when I come across one. You see, books are my preferred way to learn. Sit me in a room with somebody giving a lecture, and I will either fall asleep or start to socialize with the other listeners. This is a big part of the reason why I sucked at school all the way through high school. Put me in front of a video, like a YouTube video, a TV show, a documentary, or a movie, and it will be a snooze fest for me very quickly. But I can read for hours and retain a ton of information. Isn't it peculiar how we are all wired differently and have different learning styles? Anyhow, Man's Search for Meaning is one of the absolute best books that I have ever read. Viktor Frankl was a distinguished Jewish psychologist living in Austria prior to World War II. He had the chance to escape Austria before the Nazi invasion, but he decided to stay and care for his aging parents. As a result of that decision, Frankl, his wife, and his parents were all taken away to Nazi concentration camps. Frankl was the only person from his family to make it out alive all the rest perished. Before the Nazi invasion, Frankl had developed a new therapy for patients who were suffering from mental ailments. He called it logotherapy. The logo in logotherapy comes from the Greek word logos. Here are a couple of definitions that I found online for this word. One, the divine wisdom manifest in creation, government, and redemption of the world, and is often identified with the second person of the Holy Trinity. Two, reason that in ancient Greek philosophy is the controlling principle in the universe. My understanding of this form of therapy, after reading the book, is that you can help cure psychological illnesses by helping patients find purpose. Here is what is so fascinating about this book. The author developed his theory before being taken to the concentration camps. He tried to smuggle in a manuscript of the book that he had written on this topic, and he considered it to be his life's work. But immediately on arrival at the concentration camp, he was stripped naked, and all of his possessions were burned, including his manuscript. Including his manuscript. What is so interesting is that Frankel viewed his time in the concentration camp as an opportunity to test his theory. Could a strong purpose allow him to avoid a mental breakdown in spite of the horrendous suffering that he had to endure? Not to give away the ending, but the answer is yes. He was able to keep his mental state intact. Of course, luck played a big factor in whether he would survive or not. You can be murdered in cold blood at any time and for any reason in a concentration camp. But that wasn't the question for him. The question for him was to what extent a person can endure the most brutal suffering in the name of their purpose. He decided that this experience in the concentration camps could be a test lab for his theory. The reasons he gave himself for needing to survive were to see his wife again and to rewrite his book, which he was convinced would be of great value to the world. After many years of suffering and surviving, Frankel became convinced that while humans can't always avoid suffering, because it is not always in our control, the way we respond to suffering is always a matter of free will. Even in a concentration camp, where prisoners are subjected to the most humiliating and barbaric torture possible, Frankel found many, many examples of people who decided to suffer with great dignity. And he found many people who genuinely believed that they would make it out because they had to make it out. For some important reason, they gave themselves. They never lost hope. It is an incredibly moving story, one of the most moving that I've ever read. In the final section of his book, Frankel does an in-depth study of logotherapy and how therapists trained in this school of thought help their patients. He listed three ways that logotherapists treat their patients. The first way is by helping their patients find meaningful work, work that they care about and feel genuinely makes the world a better place. 
The second way is by helping patients develop meaningful relationships. In fact, Frankel lists love as the most powerful force in the universe. Love and the idea that one may see their family members again is what most concentration camp prisoners use to keep themselves from giving up. The third is a decision to suffer nobly. An example given here is of a quadriplegic who decides to live and enjoy their life the best way they can and to have gratitude despite their hardship. Making an effort to do this gives great purpose and meaning to one's life, according to Frankel. After treating thousands of patients, Frankel asserted that finding meaning in one of the ways listed above or before had a very high success rate of healing people who are suffering from anxiety, depression, and neurosis. Of course, this doesn't necessarily apply to folks with chemical imbalances who require medication. One last point that I will share from the book is that none of the above or none of the preceding has anything to do with acquiring material possessions. While obtaining and possessing material possessions can provide momentary pleasure, they don't give meaning to one's life. Meaning springs from a much deeper well. It comes from knowing that your work matters, that you love or care about somebody deeply, or that you have made the decision to endure your hardships bravely and with gratitude. I can't wrap this up without reminding you of this famous quote from Friedrich Nietzsche. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. Frankl uses this quote liberally throughout the book, and it is a good little quote to have handy when we come upon hard times. But remember, the quote only works if you have a why to live for. What's yours? I hope that you have a truly blessed day, and I thank you for your time. Adam.